In 1992, there was a federal law that was passed that required all IVF programs in the U.S. to report their pregnancy success rates and life birth success rates to the Centers for Disease Control, or the CDC. So every year since 1995, all the IVF programs in the country have been reporting their statistics to the CDC, which then publishes these statistics online. The major problem is that the data that's being published by the CDC is generally about three years out of date. More recently, the Society for Assisted Reproductive Technologies, or SART, has been collecting data as well, and they have been publishing it in a more timely fashion. There are three different ways that IVF success rates are reported. The first way has to do with age groups, women who are under 35, women who are 35 to 37, 38 to 40, 41 to 42, and older than 42. There's also the group of donor eggs cycles, where most of the egg donors are under the age of 30, although some may be in their early 30s. The best success rates are seen in women who are using young egg donors, and the second best success rates are women who are under the age of 35. The second way that IVF success rates are reported are based on either clinical pregnancy rates or live birth rates. Clinical pregnancy rates are when a clinical pregnancy is established, and live birth rates are when a live birth occurs. And we all know that miscarriages can occur between the time a clinical pregnancy is established and when birth occurs. So it's important to know whether you're looking at clinical pregnancy rates or live birth rates. The third way that IVF success rates are calculated are based on the denominator. The first denominator is per cycle start. The second denominator is per egg retrieval. The third denominator is per embryo transfer. Now clearly the success rates will be very different depending on which of these denominators are used in the calculation. And the best success rates will appear with cycles calculated per embryo transfer. Other important factors that need to be considered when assessing pregnancy success rates are, number one, the number of embryos that are transferred, and number two, the multiple gestation rate. We know that the more embryos that are transferred, the more likely a pregnancy is to result. However, we also know that the more embryos that are transferred, the more likely a multiple gestation is to result. And these are twins, triplets, or more, and this may not necessarily be desirable. The most important thing to remember is that the ideal outcome for IVF treatment is a healthy baby. And that is much more likely to occur with a singleton birth rather than a multiple birth. The best IVF programs are those which are able to achieve high clinical pregnancy and live birth rates while transferring relatively few embryos and having low multiple birth rates. The best advice I can give is to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. Make sure that you're comparing comparable age groups. Make sure that you know whether you're comparing clinical pregnancy rates or live birth rates. And also make sure that you know what the denominator is. And finally, a word of caution. There are some IVF programs that have websites out there which post their success rates without defining what these success rates are. And now that you know how success rates are reported, you should ask what their success rates refer to.